Hi, I'm Scott Pyburn. Hey, I'm Dom DeBellis. And welcome to Monkeys Drinking Beans. Thanks for joining us again, all four of you. We really appreciate it. <laughs> um, so today we're going to talk about a very important subject uh, that's personal to both of us. And it's about creating original content uh, versus recycling content and or binge watching content. Contributing something to the world instead of just consuming which is something uh, that I'm passionate about about as a visual artist and you're passionate about as a writer and creator. And mm -hmm. um, so yesterday, uh, well, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rephrase that for our, for our listening viewers. In my world, it was yesterday. By the time you see this, it's probably going to be down the road. <laughs> oh, a little while ago, um, I saw a, um, a crowdcast by uh, a creator. Her name is Lucy Bellwood and uh, a friend of hers jessica abel and lucy bellwood has got these i follow her on facebook i'm a fan of her work so if you're watching this uh kudos to to you um so she's got this kickstarter project going on right now and by the time you watch this it'll probably have ended um but it's called the hundred demon dialogues um where she has taken a hundred days and it's a 100 days project. It's something that I started, but I haven't gotten back to, that I'm going to get back to. Mm. And it's this creative voice in her, it's this voice in her head, it's this demon in her head that um, constantly tells her she's no good, she can't do it, nobody's going to like her work, et cetera, et cetera. It's every single um, self-sabotage, self-dialogue, monologue that she's got going on in her head. And she created a book out of these things, doing one sketch a day, and she numbers them, one through 100, and it's going to be published in this book. And she's actually doing a little demon plushie of her demon character that uh, mm -hmm. I, I subscribe to her on the Kickstarter. So I'm going to get the demon plushie because I totally relate to it. Um, as a creator, there's this voice in my head that tells me I'm no good, that tells me I can't do it, that tells me uh, it's impossible. You're too old. You're too fat. Nobody's, nobody's going to want to see your opinion. Nobody's going to want to see your artwork. Um, give it up. Go back to... Uh, driving a truck or a forklift or making pizza because um, you're no good. And so yeah. that's something that with the changes that are going on in my life, uh, I'm railing against, I'm fighting against because I desire to be a visual creative, a visual artist. And so I'm setting up my life and, and changing my life to get back to that. So, um, and she had a crowd cast yesterday, not yesterday, by the time you see this, it will be a couple of months down the road. <laughs> yes, yeah. She had a crowd cast recently with Jessica Abel, who is an artist and writer, and she's written, uh, co-written with Matt Madden, a couple of books I'm a really big fan of. This first one, Drawing Words and Writing Pictures. Is, Very cool. Is the intro, is book number one, and it basically it's a, it's a def definitive textbook about how to create comics you know? oh wow and then she's got another book which i also have um and this is a shout out to you jessica great crowdcast with lucy um mastering comics which is like the second book wow. the book. and so uh these books i've been reading for a while and i'm trying to take the lessons to heart i've started creating my own sketch cards uh, I haven't drawn any yet, but I'm going to get to that soon. Um, so I created my own sketch cards, blank sketch cards with my own artwork on the back, you know. And I'm, I'm getting to the point where it's like, all right, I'm going to start drawing. You know, I'm excited about it. It's and, Awesome. But the great thing, you know, I have a tendency to put the cart before the horse a lot. And the great thing about this crowd cast that I watched with Lucy Bellwood and Jessica Abel is they talk about some of the things that, I, I struggle with is just draw just draw for the love of drawing drawing be, draw because you're passionate about it don't don't get caught up into oh I gotta be I gotta have a million fans I gotta sell a million prints I gotta be you know the next Frank Miller or the next Jack Kirby or the next Charles Schultz um, do it because you're passionate about it do it for the love of it and that's something that I it's taken me a long time to get back to because being in the situation I'm in right now, um, not currently having a position of employment um, and, and looking for that and transitioning from one career field to another, um, I struggle with the, the doubts of, am I ever going to be able to do this? 
you know, am I ever going to make a living doing it? Um, or am I going to have to suck it up and, 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 and accept a position that's, that's not going to fulfill me in a creative way. Mm-hmm. So, um, so you talk now, Dom, and I'll drink. <laughs> I don't know what the tra- I don't know what the transition to that is. You know, um, well, I, I I also watched the um, I don't know what you call it a webinar that they, they called did. it a crowdcast. It was on crowdcast. crowdcast. Yeah. So um, I too watched uh, Lucy Bellwood and Jessica Abel in in that crowdcast. And uh, I'm I'm eager to borrow those books from you. Yes. <laughs> Yes. But, um, and they recommended because, a ton of books that I've got on my Amazon queue that I'm going to get <laughs> in this crowd. Because, uh, because I've been wondering about what to do with my project, which is a which is a novel. But I've been debating whether or not to, to you know to take the graphic novel route or maybe a screenplay route for that. And um, you know, uh, Children of Resistance, that project mm-hmm, uh, that, mm-hmm. I, that I've shared with you before. Yeah. Um, and I don't know whether or not to take it that direction or, or to continue with the novel route. Um, but I've got all these stories inside me. I've got notebooks full of them. Um, sure, sure. I could, I'm in easy reach of several of my notebooks right now, and they're all thick notebooks, and they're all full yeah. of story ideas and starters and, um, and yeah. actual manuscripts full of um drafts after drafts after drafts and i've got digital files of drafts after drafts after drafts sure sure well i'm, and, I'm gonna um, i'm gonna suggest something because i've got a friend of mine who's an author mm-hmm. she's a new york times best-selling author her name is joelle charbonneau and i've mm-hmm. known her for a long time uh she's written the dividing eden trilogy or dividing eating books which are just coming out the testing trilogy um she's also got a glee cubs glee club series skating series uh-huh. and a book called need and uh, I've known her since I was like 14, and she's become a very successful author. Um, mm. And hopefully, maybe we can get her on the show at some point. If you're watching this, Joelle, we'd like to have you on the show. Yes. Um, but uh, she just started writing and wrote a book. So, I mean, my, my, my point of view, Dom, is start with the book. Finish mm. the book and see where it goes from there, you know. Um, she's actually got some of her books optioned from Hollywood. Uh, the testing trilogy was option so wow. I mean, don't worry about making the Good movie don't worry about making the movie yourself just write the book you know but write yeah. it because again again this is again my putting the cart before the horse um we may never become as success- successful as as joel or stephen king or any any other writer you're a big fan of write because you have to do it and this is why i think the my perspective of the show i'm drawing because i have to do it because even yeah. if I never get paid for it, if I don't get this stuff on paper and out of my head, when I go to the grave, I'm, my life is going to be unfulfilled. And that's the last thing I want. Right. Uh, and, you know, I, I, I'd like to explore, and in this episode, what I'd like to do is to explore this um, this idea of what keeps us from working these original content projects. Whether you're a novelist or whether you're a painter, uh, whether you're a cartoonist, you know, maybe you're a stand-up comedian, maybe you're, a, you know, you're an actor. What keeps you from working on these original content projects? Yes, and if you're watching this episode, um, mm-hmm. put some comments down. You know, we will be checking oh, yes. the comments, and we'll be, you know, come join the conversation. You know, yes. find us on Facebook. Uh, our website will be up soon if it's not up already, and mm-hmm. um, you know, join in the conversation. Yes, absolutely, because we want to know your story. Like, mm-hmm. what what is it that you're struggling with? Mm-hmm. And I mean, maybe you're introverted. Maybe you're shy. Mm-hmm. Maybe you're um, maybe you're sick. Maybe you work in a day job. Maybe you're in a bad relationship. I don't know what your challenge is, maybe, but maybe you're standing in your own way. How are we standing in our own way? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, are there ways that we're, we're subconsciously sabotaging ourselves? I know yeah. I can tell you stories that I've sabotaged myself mm-hmm. uh, in several different ways, and maybe we can talk about that if we've got some time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got voices in my head, you know, like, uh, you know, uh, when Lucy was t- sharing her uh, demon in her head, mm-hmm. who's, you know, she's personified in, into this plushy character, you yeah. know, that I love that, you know, yeah. um, because I've got voices in my head and I've got tapes playing in my head that represent, you know, a family member or represent a school teacher from my past or represent a guidance counselor who told me, you know, you won't amount to much. Right. You're just an average kid. 
right. or you're a below average kid, or you've got a learning disability, Dom, mm -hmm. or hey, you know, you're the foreign kid who grew up with a funny name, yeah. you know, or you're the kid who, you know, you just don't have the, the uh, background for this. Yeah. Well, you know, all of those people have, have left tapes in my head mm -hmm. and those tapes play in my head. Yeah. And they're my subconscious. Mm -hmm. So even when I don't realize that I'm playing the tapes, I'm playing the tapes. Do, do you feel me? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And and yeah, I mean, a lot of the things I got from from the crowdcast yesterday with Lucy and Jessica was the question I asked, which Lucy Bellwood, by the way, thank you so much. I just want to I want to shout out to you and say, um, not only because here's the thing, Lucy is in Portland, Oregon, and Jessica was in France. Yes. So the time difference was crazy. Uh, it, the crowdcast went long and they wanted to go more, but Jessica was just so exhausted and God bless her for going as long as she did. Um, but yeah. Lucy was so great afterwards because I asked a question and my question was like third in the queue. They never got to my question. They kind of skipped over my question to answer one that was related to what they were talking about. And I was like, no, but Lucy was so great. <laughs> she got on Instagram afterwards and went down the list and started with my question and answered all the questions, including questions she was getting fed while she was on Instagram, doing an Instagram live. And God bless you, Lucy, you got my name, you pronounced my name right the first time, my last name, which I love because people butcher my name and it's Pyburn, it's P-Y-B-U-R-N, it's like take a pie and burn it, it's not hard. You know, it's not Kruther Polly, you know. Um, but she nailed it right. and, 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 and we'd never had a real conversation. I'd never introduced myself and, and verbalized, hi, I'm Scott Pyburn, you know, unless she's been watching Monkeys Drinking Beans, um, I don't know. But uh, it was great that she went down and she answered the questions. Anyway, squirreling out of control, my question was, how do you structure your day? Uh, how do you keep the squirrels, and I used the word squirrels and she loved that, um, like laundry and doing dishes and, and uh, anything from distracting you, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. And she addressed that, you know, and, and I agree with what she said. Um, and I'm trying to structure my day like it. She gets up in the morning. She's got first thing in the morning when it's quiet. She's got a few hours during the day. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm not just trying to say, oh, Lucy said this, so that's the way to do it. But you've got to find as a creative what works for you. Maybe you're not good in the morning. Maybe you're only good in the afternoon. Maybe you're only good at night after everybody's gone to bed. Um, but it's a matter of, of setting a timer if you have to. Uh, and it's basically saying for 25 minutes, I mean, we all have iPhones. They've all got a stopwatch on it. They've all got a... You know, we've got a cell phone. We have a clock where you can set it and have an alarm go off and then focus on one thing for a set period of time, you know. So it's a matter of just, I think a lot of it is, I my personal thing, not talking about Lucy's thing anymore. God bless you, Lucy. But um, my personal issue is if I don't structure my day, if I don't, and if I, if I overstructure, if I plan my entire week out, it's like the 800 pound gorilla jumps on my shoulders. It's too much. I can't do it. I'll never get it all done. Um, and I sit and I watch Netflix and, and nothing gets done. So I have to structure my time in little snippets. I structure one to three days out loosely. And then at night when I'm in bed, I go to bed and I say, okay, tomorrow I write a list just on a, a simple yellow pad. I got nothing on this yellow pad, but just one of these simple yellow pads I'll write down tomorrow. I've got to do this, 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 and this. And then I'll decide in my head what I'm going to do first. And it's just a matter of, it might be, okay, i got to clean up the basement. i got to do dishes. I want to draw three characters. Um, but the other thing that I've noticed, and again, I'm not drawing much yet. Hopefully by the time you view this, I'll be drawing a lot. Um, you got to schedule that creative stuff first. I think you got to prioritize that creative stuff. Because I get in the habit of, oh, I got a list of things to do today. I got to go to the store. I got to clean the living room. I got to take out the garbage. And then by the time I get all that stuff done, my energy is, is draining and my energy is getting low. And it's a lot easier at that point to say, well, the day's half over. I'm going to go watch Netflix. I'll draw tomorrow and put it off. So you got to prioritize that creativeness and set it down and get to the point where you're going to do this for 25 minutes, you know, a day. And if it starts out at five minutes a day or 10 minutes a day, work your way up to, I'm drawing three hours a day. It doesn't have to be, you're chained to the desk for three hours, you know, work, yeah. take a break, go to the bathroom. But, but if you don't prioritize that time and make that top of the list, you won't get to it. Mm. That's my take. 
You know, that's really great. And I, I, uh, I read a book by Stephen King. It's called On Writing. And, uh, and, if, you, and if you're a creative, you know, even if you're not a writer, uh, I really recommend that book. Um, I also recommend Anne Lamott's book, Bird by Bird, mm -hmm. uh, which is a completely different take on it. But it's about this, this process as creatives that we go through, you know, this, this whole like, idea of like writer's block, you know. And he's, he says, you know, writer's block happens to every writer. But the trick is you have to, you have to be found writing. <laughs> yeah, you have to be found sketching. You have yep. to be found drawing. You have to be found whatever you're doing. That way, when the writer's block comes, you know you're already working your way out of it. Yeah, because and here's the thing: uh, great is the enemy of good. Yes, which I think yeah. is is actually a, a management lesson by um, mm -hmm. Jack Welsh, actually, mm -hmm. or somebody, maybe Peter Drucker. <laughs> but great is the enemy of good. You don't have to have a perfect sketch, Scott. No, no, I just got to produce. You don't have to have a perfect chapter, you know? You don't have to write a perfect scene. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you have to write a scene. Yeah. Before well, you can get to the next scene. And before you days, get to the next scene. Yeah. And some days, yeah. you, you mentioned Stephen King, who is one of my one of my all-time favorite authors from my childhood. Totally. Um, he wrote somewhere, and I was Googling it briefly, that basically he just set himself a word count. He started out from writing a 1,000 words a day to 2,000 words a day. And then some days it's all gibberish. And some days he's writing his laundry list. He starts with his laundry list and works from there. And yeah. some days he gets he gets some gems and other days he doesn't, but he meets his goal. And that's it, you've got to set a goal. I've got to, you know, if I'm sketching, I'm gonna draw a thousand good sketches before one's gonna even be good, but I have to get through those thousand sketches to get to that one, one mm -hmm. gem. Yeah, and hey, if I set myself, like my friend Ryan McRae, and Ryan, if you're watching, uh, uh, thank you for tuning in. And if you're not watching, uh, you're dead to me. <laughs> <laughs> Tune in, uh, man. What's the matter with no, you? Ryan, Ryan McRae is the ADHD nerd, and he's wonderful. you got to go check him out. Look at look him up. Google him. The ADHD nerd. Mm -hmm. uh, Ryan McRae is wonderful. Um, and he's got all of these free eBooks that he gives away off of his site and stuff like that. Yeah. And he's, he's also coaching people in how to cope with ADHD. Mm -hmm. And if you're a creative or if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to break through and you've got all of these things that sabotage you, he's great. But what, what uh, Ryan, Ryan McRae, before I get off on that squirrel, <laughs> uh, what was I going to say? So Ryan has all of these great strategies that can help you break out of these self-imposed traps that we set for ourselves, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. um, you know, like the great question is like, what am I doing instead of creating? Yes. Like, yes. for God's sake, if you're doing anything except, except creating today, you really need to ask yourself that. What am I doing instead of creating? Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. you're obviously doing something. Yeah. And if it's watching Netflix, God bless you. I hope I hope you and Netflix are very happy. Hey, we together. had a show about that a couple shows ago. We were, <laughs> yeah. We, ha we have our issues with Netflix. <laughs> but here's the thing. You have an opportunity cost mm -hmm. that you are paying mm -hmm. every time you give in yeah. to watching TV instead of creating. Here's creating thing. gives you a voice in the universe, right? Yeah. It allows you to speak into the universe with your voice that nobody else has, Scott Fiber, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And, I, and I'm, just as I'm saying it to you, I'm saying it to Dom DeBellis too, Okay. And, and I'm saying it to all of you guys out there uh, who are listening to the program. Sorry, I just smacked the, I just smacked the microphone. Sorry about that. It's all right. You woke our audience up. Wake up. Wake up, people. Um, <laughs> all four of you. So what I'm saying is like creating gives us, a, a, gives us a voice in the universe. Remember why you love creating. Mm -hmm. And then, then consider that when you're making the decision to surf on Netflix. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Because I'm not against watching TV. I'm just against snuffing out that creative voice in ourselves. Mm -hmm. That's all I'm saying to you. Yeah, There's was... an opportunity cost yep. that you are paying mm -hmm. when you say no to your creative spirit. Yes, absolutely, Dom. I was talking to a friend the other day, and I was expressing these issues I had with him and, and saying, okay, you know, why, can, why can't I get past this? And he's like, Scott, you, you, you need to get back to drawing for the love of drawing 
Forget yes. about making a living doing it. Forget about going and doing these conventions you want to do. Forget about doing these prints and whatnot. And we're gonna get we're gonna get to that in a, in a few minutes because we got only ten minutes left and we got some other stuff to talk to. But he was like, get back to the joy of drawing for the sake of drawing. And once you get yeah. back into that and you find that place where you lose yourself, where you, time stands still. Okay, you are literally a time traveler. You are drawing, and you start drawing at 10 a.m. and then and then at or 10 p.m. And then 4 a.m. comes around and you think you've only you think you've only been drawing for an hour, and you've yeah. been drawing for like four or five hours. That's the the matrix. That's the 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 uh, the glow. You know, <laughs> you got to get to the glow. You know, that's the the point you got to get at. And um, that's what it's about. And and for me, um, we're talking. We're going to talk. We only got 10 minutes left, Dom. So let's talk a little bit about. Um, I'm a. I want to be a comic book artist or a cartoonist. So I've been going to these conventions and we're going to talk about this with some artists in a future show about yeah. creating original content versus recycling content or appropriating content. So I go to Wizard World or I go to C2E2 or any of these comic cons and you, you see these artists in Artist Alley and they're doing unlicensed prints based on other characters. Okay. And there was a big brouhaha a long time ago. And we'll get into this when we get down the road in another show about about that and the legality of that um but it's about okay if you're just doing mashups and doing yeah there, there's a lot of people you're not going to get somebody to come to your table if you're not doing something that's recognizable in artist alley again that's a long conversation we're going to cover in another show but um it's about finding your own thing to create your own special thing to put it in the world um we binge watch a lot of shows. We talk about movies, you know, how they're recycling Ghostbusters and yada, yada, yada. And it's like, just put out something original. Put out something that, that is you. And you'll, yeah. find, you'll find your audience. And your audience, believe me, there are more people out there like you than you know. Your audience will find you. Um, it, but you've got to keep with it. it. It takes time. And I may be... I'm preaching to myself, okay? Mm. Because it's what I need to do. Uh, I'm... I'm I'm at the bottom of the mountain and I'm looking up and I'm like, Oh crap, but it's there, <laughs> but it's there uh, and I'm going to climb it if it kills me because eventually, um, it will, you know, uh, there's, there's so much leftover potential in the grave, you know, and I want to go to my grave saying, Hey, I, my bucket list, it's all checked off. Outstanding. So, is there anything so what, else have to, to, what have you got to look forward to? Do you have any final notes to wrap up? Or um... Well, um, yeah, we're, we're getting to that, that point in the show. It's about time to wrap up. Um, Unless you had any more. Well, I'm going over our production notes here. I just want to make sure we kind of covered everything. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, just, just figure out what's standing in your way mm -hmm. and put it on the shelf. Uh, you gave me a great production list. Um, a friend, uh, or a friend, you found somebody online. His name was Brendan Bouchard. Yeah, Brendan is a great mentor for me. Yeah, and he and you sent me his project list, his his form, and it's a great. It's just structure your time, structure your day. You may have projects going over six months, yada yeah. yada yada. And uh, do you have, do you know Brendan's website? Since we, we we're shouting him out here, uh, I do know that uh, BrendanBouchard.com. Yeah, and it's spelled uh, Brendan is B R E N. D O N Burchard is B U R C H A R D dot yeah. com. Yeah. Uh, uh, you can, he also is the author of the Motivation Manifesto. Mm -hmm. He's got a YouTube channel. He is uh, he's a real pro. He's a much sought after public speaker and executive coach. Yes. Um, he's a great he's a great mentor for me. He's uh, very clarifying and that and what Scott is talking about is one of his tools is. Um, is a one-page daily planner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's how I order my day, and yeah. it's basically. Um, and we'll see about posting that to our website because I think that Brendan makes that available freely, and uh, I'll yeah. post a link to that. Yeah, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll post a, we'll post a bunch of links, and we're going to tag a bunch of people on our YouTube channel, people we've talked about in this show. Um, if you yes. have any questions, concerns, join in the conversation. You can't find Lucy Bellwood or Jessica Abel or Brendan Bouchard. 
tag us down below and we'll we'll get you to their sites because they're awesome Absolutely. creative people and inspirations to us both and um yeah with that just just uh stop watching us drinking beans go create something today Absolutely. And, you know, draw a sketch, draw a doodle, make a make a pizza. Um, you know, send us a pic. Show us what you did today. Um, yeah. And with that, we're gonna wrap it up. Uh, next week we got some interesting stuff we're gonna talk about. Um, but you're gonna have to come back to see what that's gonna be. So, <laughs> with that, um, I'm Scott Pyburn. Hey, I'm Dom DeBellis. Thanks mon- for coming. Thanks for coming. We're monkeys drinking beans. See you next time. <laughs>